Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn it into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. But like any good scientist knows, the best way to find out is to try for yourself, which you can do for free, like right now. So let's get to it. Welcome to Sketchy Ochem. It's move-in day at Sketchy U, and like any good college dorm, all anyone thinks about here is orgo. That is what people do in college dorms. Study organic chemistry all day and all night, and definitely nothing else. It's hard to talk about things without knowing their names, so let's kick things off with naming the building blocks of organic molecules, hydrocarbon backbones, and functional groups. Get ready for the nomenclature and structure of long chains of C's, H's, O's, and nitrogen, and a few other elements too. Looks like Grandma tagged along to make sure these coeds keep their behavior basic and simple, just like simple hydrocarbon molecules. They call them hydrocarbons because all they've got is hydrogen and carbon. Grandma's straight single cane represents alkanes. Alkanes provide the bare bones structure of carbon backbones. They are hydrocarbon chains in which the carbons are bonded to other carbons by only single bonds. In their simplest form as straight chains of carbons, alkanes are named by their length. CH4 with one carbon is methane. A two carbon chain is ethane. Three carbons is propane. And four carbons is butane. The pattern continues. All alkane names end in ane. A -N -E. As we look at longer carbon chains, the names start using the Greek prefixes you'll recognize from the names of polygons. Five carbon chain, pentane, like pentagon. Six carbon chain, hexane, like hexagon. You, you get the idea. These naming conventions exist for alkanes all the way up to over a hundred carbons long, but it's unlikely that you'll ever have to remember the word nonadecahectane. But organic molecules aren't just parent chains. There will often be other chains of carbons branching off the parent. Those are called side chains. When an alkane is a side chain, it takes on the il suffix, Y-L. So if a side chain is just a CH3 group, we call that group methyl. If it has two carbons, it's called ethyl. Then propyl, butyl, and so on. Alkenes are similar to alkanes except they include at least one carbon-carbon double bond. Alkenes are even named pretty similarly to alkanes. The Greek prefixes are exactly the same, but they get an en suffix, e-n-e, -E, when they're the parent chain, and enyl, e-n-y-l, when they're a side chain. To represent that alkenes have carbon-carbon double bonds, the wiener dog with a keen sense of smell is taking in a double sniff of something funky in this dorm. I gotta admit, that smell sure does take me back. Finally, we have alkynes, which have carbon-carbon triple bonds, represented by grandma's kind patch. Yep, that's three I's for three bonds. They're named with the ein suffix, Y-N-E, and as inyl, Y-N-Y-L, if they're a side chain. So, that's hydrocarbons. But you've seen the periodic table. There's a lot more than two elements on that thing. Once we get a little more variety in these organic molecules, the names get more and more interesting. In organic molecules, atoms that are not hydrogen or carbon are called heteroatoms. Different groups of heteroatoms on a molecule are called functional groups. The International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, or IUPAC, has determined the priority order of functional groups in order to name molecules properly, but priority order can be quite arbitrary at times. Fortunately, there are some general rules. One rule is that more heteroatoms in the functional group means higher priority. And it looks like someone's clothes with heteroatom letters on them, like O's, N's, and S's, have ended up in a mess on the floor. That's a high-priority cleanup job, if you ask me. If your dorm mates learn about underwear like that on day one, you'll never live it down. Another general priority rule relates to electron density. 
The more delocalized the electron density, the higher the priority. For example, carboxylic acids, in which electrons can easily delocalize and resonate around those three carbon-oxygen bonds, have super high priority. Carboxylic acids actually have the highest priority of all functional groups. This high priority mess of minus sign clothes is even more scattered around the floor than the other clothes. That's there to remind us that free moving, delocalized electrons also lead to high priority functional groups. Of course, many organic molecules have multiple functional groups. When it's time to incorporate them all into a chemical name, the highest priority functional group will get recognized at the end of the molecule, in the suffix. All other functional groups in a molecule, the ones that are not the highest priority, are included in a molecule's name by their prefix. See this diploma some overachiever left behind? Notice how the frame is crooked, so the suffix, PhD, is higher than the prefix, doctor. That's to remind us that suffixes are used to name the highest priority functional group. And we are indeed about to see a lot of prefixes and suffixes of a bunch of common functional groups. This is our last chance for a breather before that big list. All right, breather over. And now, the list of common functional groups. As we go up the priority list, we'll also be moving from the bottom left to the upper right of this sketch, so the arrangement in space can help you remember the priority list of functional groups. Halides are any carbon with a halogen on them. That's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Technically, astatine too, but astatine is super rare and you won't have to deal with it often. Halogens are even lower priority than alkanes, so they'll never get to name the suffix of a molecule. As such, they will always be a prefix. Their prefix names are made by dropping the I-N-E at the end of the halogen's name and replacing it with N-O. So instead of fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, you get fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iodo. We've symbolized low priority halogen groups with these hollow toilet paper rolls on the floor. The same always a prefix rule also applies to a few other functional groups, like nitros, azides, and alkoxides, also known as ethers. Working our way up, plain old hydrocarbons with no heteroatoms come next. The more bonds between carbons there are, the higher priority the chain has. So for naming the suffix of a molecule, single bond alkanes are below double bonded alkenes, which are below triple bonded alkynes. Then, the first group above alkynes is amines. Amines are similar to alkyl groups, with hydrogens filling out all the empty bonds, but one of the carbons has been swapped out for a nitrogen. The simplest version of an amine is an NH2 group, which will get the molecule a prefix of amino if the amine is not the highest priority functional group, or a suffix of amine if it is the highest priority group. And it seems one of our dorm mates is trying to bulk up with his Amino brand powder with a mean looking guy on the label. NH2, though the simplest type of amine, isn't the only variety there is. Sometimes rather than just a hydrogen, a full side chain branches off from a nitrogen. When this happens, you name that side chain like any other functional group, but you put an N in front of it. Though there is one exception to this priority. If the nitrogen is adjacent to a carbonyl, a CO double bond, then it's not an amine at all. It's actually an amide, which we'll cover a bit later since amides are a lot higher priority than amines. Ah, oh, so that's why the floor is so sticky. Alcohols are organic molecules with an OH group, and we've represented them with these cans of Coe's Light on this table in the back room. Alcohols get named with the hydroxy prefix if they're not the highest priority group in the structure, or the all suffix, that's O-L, when they are. Structures with two alcohol groups are referred to as diols, or glycols. Next, ranked higher than alcohols, we have ketones, which we've represented with these keys in the bathroom door. Ketones have a carbon-oxygen double bond, which allows for more electron delocalization than the single bond in alcohols. They're named with either the oxo, OXO prefix when they're not the highest priority functional group, or the ON, O-N-E suffix when they are the highest priority. And next up, you see Al hiding behind the bathroom door? 
Either he forgot his towel or he's morbidly afraid of dachshunds. Either way, Al hiding represents aldehydes. Aldehydes are higher priority than alcohols and ketones. Aldehydes are similar to ketones since they both have a carbonyl group, a CO double bond, but for aldehydes, the carbonyl is located at the end of a carbon chain instead of in the middle of a carbon chain. Aldehydes are named with the oxo prefix or the al, al suffix depending on their priority. That brings us to the highest priority functional groups we're going to cover, carboxylic acids and their derivatives. We've represented carboxylic acids with this cardboard box up above everything else in the room. Carboxylic acids consist of a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and single bonded to another oxygen as part of an OH group. When naming these molecules, we can use the prefix carboxy or the suffix oic acid. All right, we jumped all the way to the top of the bookshelf to start this section, but there are a few shelves for us to fill in between. These are the carboxylic acid derivatives, functional groups you can get by removing the OH group of a carboxylic acid and replacing it with something else. We're going to be looking just above where Al's hiding since all of these derivatives are higher priority than aldehydes, though they're still below the cardboard box because they're still lower priority than unmodified carboxylic acids. First, let's take a look at this philosophy textbook that could surely trigger an existential crisis. Ami represents amides, which are named either with the carbamoyl or amido prefix or the amide suffix. Similar to amines, we label any substituents attached to a nitrogen atom with a capital N in the molecule name. Did you notice the philosophy book was printed by N publishers? Up next, esters are like amides but with an oxygen in place of the nitrogen, so it has an OR group. When naming esters, we can use the prefix alkoxycarbonyl, or the short suffix, O8. We've represented esters with this I love ester photo of someone's high school sweetheart. Or, wait, they love ester or this girl from Chemlab in the other picture? This one's gonna end in tears. But maybe you'll have fewer tears on your orgo exam because this ester or dilemma can help you remember that esters have an OR alkoxyl group in them. Anhydrides are the highest priority carboxylic acid derivative we'll cover. Anhydride means without water. So we've represented them with this plant that's definitely been without water for quite a long time. Anhydrides are very closely related to carboxylic acids. They're formed by two carboxylic acid molecules reacting and giving off water as a product, hence the two cardboard boxes on this top shelf. Symmetric anhydrides, which are formed from two identical carboxylic acids, are named with the suffix oic anhydride. But if they're formed with two different carboxylic acids, then they have names like ethanoic propanoic anhydride, where we name check both carbon chains before the final anhydride. All right, that's the initial tour of your sketchy U dorm. Let's put off unpacking that moving truck just one more minute, though, by reviewing all this nomenclature one more time. Hydrocarbons with only single carbon carbon bonds are called alkanes. Alkenes have at least one double carbon-carbon bond, and alkynes have at least one triple carbon-carbon bond. Functional groups with more heteroatoms and more delocalized electrons have higher naming priority. A suffix is added to the name of an organic molecule for the highest priority functional group, while prefixes are added for all other groups. We've also got several important functional groups in order from lowest to highest priority. There's the always lowest priority halogens, then alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, then amines, followed by alcohols, then ketones, then aldehydes, followed by the carboxylic acid derivatives, which include amides, esters, and anhydrides, and lastly, plain old carboxylic acids. <sighs> okay. That moving truck has been looming outside the window this whole time, so it's time to get out there and haul some boxes. Enjoy this lesson? Want to see more? Let us know by using the link in the description below.